should I say that? Yo, 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 the most overrated legs in triathlon <laughs> are here at the Boulder Reservoir. Are you rolling? Oh, geez. Hey, guys. Sorry. This is this is me when I'm uh, not on camera. But anyways, the most the most overrated legs are coming in, giving you the check-in for Ironman Coeur d'Alene. I have a lot to prove to myself, and uh, we're just going to give you the real talk, the real deal. So come along for this run. It's Tuesday, so five days before the race, and just a short one-hour run. And yeah, the fire is burning deep inside me, and I'm grounded to the earth and grounded to the world and ready to hurt. Well, I guess let's start with the less important of the two, in my opinion, and that's the body. And the body's feeling good. The preparation's been good. I've done what I feel I've needed to do, and most importantly, there's been a big change in my body between Tulsa and now. With Tulsa being three weeks after St. George, the training was really surgy and threshold type training. And I had a really high threshold, but I really believed I was burning a lot of sugar and my fat burning wasn't good. So since Tulsa, I brought the intensity down and I've actually done more sort of met about metabolic or fasted training. And I just feel a lot more fat adapted. My high end and my turbo isn't as good, but I can just go longer and I'm more efficient. So that's super important. And then the mind, I'm ready to suffer and I'm ready to go into a deep, dark place. And um, yeah, it's almost a cycle. It's like bad race, usually really good race, bad race, really good race. And so I'm hoping that's the cycle because if we look at St. George, three weeks before that, I had 70.3 Texas, right? And I got third, but I was absolutely furious at myself after that race for the way I swam and for the way the race played out and I had a chip on my shoulder and something to prove to myself. Yeah, you know, to be honest, I feel like I got thrown under the bus a little bit, right? Lionel, all along, said Coeur d'Alene is going to be my A Ironman. I'm full gas to this. Originally, he was going to do Tulsa and I was like, I want to race this guy. So then I did Tulsa, he changed his mind, does Coeur d'Alene. I'm like, I want to race this guy at his best and give him a run for his money at the Ironman distance, right? And then I commit to Coeur d'Alene. You know, everything's going 100% and we're going to be facing off, both at our best, both giving it our all. Then last week, all of a sudden, oh, Lionel's just going to be sandbagging it and blah, blah, blah. So, you know, I want to race Lionel at his absolute best, and I just hope that he's showing up with that and um, that he can give both. And yeah, that try battle between him and Jan will be great, but uh, if you put your name on a start list and say it's your A Ironman, if someone shows up to race you, you owe it to them. Not to mention, I mean, if I beat Lionel, and I think I ought to get invited to race Jan. Yeah, so in 2015, one, it was 106 degrees that day. So even hotter than it's gonna be this time. And two, I was 20 years old and I won the overall amateur field. And I went out there and truthfully, I didn't give a flying poop what anyone else was doing, what their race plan was if they were faster than me, if they were more accomplished than me. I went out there for my own individual day and I carried out my race plan and I was just in the moment the whole time. And that was actually why I got the tattoo on my back. And it says mana. And that's like energy of the world and spirit and being connected and just finding that energy from the world and harnessing it and using it to my own advantage. And so that's really what I'm carrying through. A big motto I have for this race is place is pointless. And that's just to get me to race my own race, to 
do what I know I can do in every moment. And whatever that ends up being, it ends up being. I mean, so I love hot races. Actually, all my best races have been in pretty hot days. My first Ironman win, Chattanooga, it was like 95, but 80% humidity. And then I won 70.3 Cozumel. And that was the hottest race I've ever done. I tried to explain how hot it was there. And uh, yeah, so I like the heat. We've been blessed that the Boulder June has been unbelievably hot. Um, and I've just been training in it because I love the heat. And then some sauna prep and I don't know, anytime I race in the heat, it just fires me up because there's always that voice of everyone saying, oh, Sam, you're a big guy. You can't race in the heat, blah, blah, blah. And um, I love proving that wrong. It's actually, I mean, it's actually science. It's surface area to mass. And I have a lot of surface area, actually relative to my mass. So I'm really good at dissipating heat. And um, I've got a stomach made of steel, so I'm able to put in whatever fluids and calories I need. So actually, the heat suits me. So I can't wait. Yeah, so at the pro level, the 70.3, it's really, it's full gas all the way. And obviously it's incredibly difficult, but your body never gets in a half to the point where you want to quit. And you have to get that mind over matter and say, keep going. And everyone from the top pro at Coeur d'Alene to the last finisher, I think is going to get to a point on that day their body is gonna say, I wanna quit, I wanna be done. And sometimes you might have 25 miles left on the bike and a full marathon left to do. So it's, for me, that'd be four hours of pain to deal with and wanting to quit. And for an age grouper, that's a lot more time. And it's just, I mean, every night I fall asleep thinking about it and just thinking about wanting that pain, deserving to suffer. And uh, yeah, I mean, putting one leg over the next and it doesn't have to be sexy. It doesn't have to be pretty. And it might not even feel fast. I'm fully prepared to do some walking at this race and still have an exceptional day. So, but always keep moving forward. Um, yeah, you know, it's interesting. I think before, well, oh, Tulsa, I was definitely nervous, and St. George, and I think in a lot of ways, because I had hyped those races up more, like, I knew I was in a predicament where I had to do things, but now it's more just a sense of, a sense of purpose for myself, because I don't think I've hyped this race up, I've been very clear that I've had things to work on for an Ironman, and I'm trying to prove it to myself that I'm not, I'm not really nervous about the outcome because whatever I do, I'm being honest with myself about it and it's gonna be what it is, but the nerves of a long day will come in, in a day or two. Uh, I just finished Relentless by Tim Grover. It's Michael Jordan's strength training coach. And so, yeah, there were some good takeaways. I mean, to be honest, that's how I live my life already anyways, but gave me a few good sound bites. Okay, I'm ready for your misconception question. <laughs> so I think the biggest misconception is that I'm basically this rude guy that that expects to come in and disrupt everything and take people's place and have the top step without earning it. And that's the exact opposite from the truth. I'm someone with a big personality. I believe in an unlimited potential in myself. 
But most importantly, I believe if I want to get something, I have to work my absolute ass off for it. And I have to be passionate and disciplined and dedicated to get it. And I'm willing to work for it. And then I usually end up getting it. No more fucking questions now. That's all of them. 